Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. In this video, we're given f of x equals 2x squared plus 16x plus 35. And we have to find number one, the inverse, sketch both the function and the inverse, state the domain and range for each. And then we have to restrict the domain for f of x in order for the inverse to be a function. So lots of doing this question, starting off with number one, we have to find the inverse. Now, as I mentioned in the video before, whenever you're given a quadratic and you're asked to find the inverse, you always want to make sure the quadratic is in vertex form. So notice this quadratic, it's given in standard form. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this quadratic and complete the square on it, put it into vertex form. So we could take out a two here we'd have x squared plus 8x, and this would be plus 35. And then what we could do is we could take half of 8, which is 4, and then square it. That would give us 16. So this would be plus 16 minus 16. This would be plus 35. And then what we want to do is we want to take this negative 16 out, got to multiply it by the 2 that is in front. So we'd have x squared plus 8x plus 16 uh, minus 32 plus 35. And then this here will always be a perfect square trinomial. So x plus 4 squared, negative 32 plus 35, that gives us positive 3. Right, so this quadratic in standard form is the same as this quadratic in vertex form. So what we want to do here, uh, let me just rewrite this vertex form up here, is now we want to interchange the x and the y, and then we want to isolate for y. So we would put the x here, we would put the y right there. And then we want to isolate for that y. So what we do, bring this three over and divide both sides by two. So we'd have x minus three divided by two equals y plus four squared. To get rid of that exponent there, we square root both sides. So we'd have the square root of x minus three over two equals y plus four. And then bring the four over square root of x minus 3 over 2 minus 4 is equal to y. So that there is your inverse. So that is actually the answer to um, question 1. So let me write it over here. f of negative 1x is equal to the square root of x minus 3 over 2 minus Four. So moving on to number two, we got to sketch both f of x and its inverse. I wrote out both equations over there. So now notice that we got f of x in vertex form. So it's easy to make a table of values, a symmetric table of values in order to graph it. So what goes in the middle of the table? The middle would be the vertex. And what's the vertex here? It's negative four and positive three. So that would go there. And usually what I'm doing is I'm picking two x values to the left of the vertex, two x values to the right of the vertex. In this case, I'm only going to pick one on each side just to save a little bit of time. Um, so to the left of negative four, we got negative five. To the right of it, we got negative three. But if you wanted to create more points, you would just put in negative six and then negative two. You would just add those on. But I'm just going to create three points. So negative 5 plus 4 gives us a negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1, 1 times 2 is 2, plus 3 gives us 5. And then negative 3 plus 4 gives us positive 1, 1 squared is 1, times 2 plus 3, that gives us 5 as well. And it makes sense for it to be symmetrical because we put the vertex in the middle. So these points here, we can actually graph these. So negative 4 and 3, that's like over here. Negative 3 and 5, that would be like here. And then negative 5 and 5 would be like over here. So this parabola looks something 
like that. Just a rough drawing of the parabola. And I only use three points. So again, you can use more points if you want. Just make sure they are symmetrical. You're always keeping that vertex in the middle of the table. Right, so that is the sketch of this parabola here. Now, what if we want to sketch the inverse? Well, now that we have the table for the original function, what we can do is we could just interchange the x and y values. So this negative 5, positive 5, we're turning to 5, negative 5. This would be 3 and negative 4. And then this would be 5 and negative 3, like that. And then we can just plot these points. Um, so if we make Cartesian plane like that, 5 and negative 5, that would be like down here. 3 and negative 4 would be like over here. And then uh, 5 and negative 3, that would be like there. So it's just a sideways parabola. And that is the inverse. Right, so let's label the vertexes here. We got negative 4 and positive 3. And then this vertex here is positive 3 and negative 4. Okay, and then from here for both of these, pretty easy to state the domain and range. So the domain for this parabola here, well notice the x values can be anything. That's the domain for a parabola always unless it is restricted whether in the question or by a word problem. But if it's not, domain for any parabola is always xcr. What's the range? It's yer, but y has to be greater than or equal to 3. That y value of 3 of the vertex, all the y values have to be greater than it. All right, moving on to this, what's the domain of this inverse here and the range? Well, domain is x can be anything, but notice all the x values have to be greater than or equal to 3. And then the range, notice the y values can be anything because this just keeps expanding uh, to positive infinity and negative infinity. So this is y, e, r. And if you notice, how do both of these domain and ranges relate? Well, they're just interchange. So this was y is greater than or equal to 3. This is x is greater than or equal to 3. This is x er. This is y er. That's always going to be the relationship for the domain and range between a function and its inverse. And then finally, number four, we've got to restrict the domain for f of x. So we have to restrict this domain in order for the inverse to be a function. Well, notice right now the inverse is not a function. It's failing the vertical line test, right? So how can we make the inverse a function? Well, we can perhaps maybe get rid of this leg on the inverse like that. But if we do that, we have to restrict the range. So notice y can't be y er anymore. y has to be now greater than or equal to negative 4. Does that make sense? Before it was yer because this was going down forever and this is going up forever. But now that we're getting rid of this piece, all of the y values have to be greater than or equal to negative four. And now notice it's a function. It passes that vertical line test. So we restricted the range. y has to be greater than or equal to negative four for the inverse. If we restrict the range for the inverse, it means we have to restrict the domain for the original function. So we would just write x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. What that means is that we're getting rid of this leg here. So now all the x values have to be greater than or equal to negative 4. And the inverse of this is just that there. And now this ends up being a function. Right? So that's how you restrict the domain for the function in order for the inverse to be 
a function. We could have also wrote x is uh, less than or equal to negative 4. So instead of drawing this leg, we could have just drew this leg, erase this one, and then this would be y is less than or equal to negative 4. So we would then draw this leg and erase this one. But either way works. It's, I feel like it's more uh, proper to restrict it this way because this looks more like a uh, radical function, the uh, square root function, if you remember from chapter one. But either way works. Usually I restrict it uh, for x to be greater than or equal to whatever that x value of the vertex is there. And it always makes the inverse a function. Right? So again, whenever you're working with a quadratic and then you have to work with the inverse, always make sure the quadratic is in vertex form. So then you could find the equation of the inverse. And then you can make a nice table for the function, a symmetric table, and then you just interchange the x and y's to get the table for the inverse.